Jade, welcome to my channel if you do here. In today's video, we're going to be doing our first furniture flip or I'm going to be talking you through how you can do your first furniture flip. I'm going to be working on a side table or I'm actually working on two side tables, but they are exactly the same. And I'm gonna talk you through how you can refinish the side tables. I am painting it in white, which is a very popular color to paint in, but let's check out how we're going to refinish these tables. Let's take a look at the tables before. So this is the tables and I could see from the top that they had a beautiful timber grain. So I wanted to strip them off and have raw exposed timber tops. However, it is definitely possible that you could paint the entire piece. If you are going to have raw exposed tops, you're going to need to use a sander or a paint stripper to strip the top off. If you do use a sander, you can use either a belt sander like I'm doing here, which is the much faster alternative. I use the belt sander and strip the top off and then swap to my orbital. What I'm doing here is using my foot and my leg to help hold the table in place because it is quite light. When I used my belt sander, the table wanted to sort of run away. So I had to hold the table in place using my leg while I used my belt sander. I then swap over to my orbital sander because I need to then sort of clean off the top to make a nice smooth appearance. And it's easier to do this with my orbital sander. Table doesn't run away. If you're going to be painting the whole piece, all you're going to need to do is a scuff sand of the top and you don't need to sand it back so that you've got a raw exposed top. Here I'm demonstrating how you can actually scuff sand the entire piece using a hand sander. All I've got here is a sanding pad and I'm using that sanding pad to go over the entire piece as it has a glossy finish, the previous varnish. And this way I'm then roughing up that varnish so that I've got a nice surface for my paint and my primer to stick to, which is going to help me create adhesion. If I am going to be doing the same to the top, I'm going to use the sanding pad and scuff sand the top of the table as well. If you're going to be having raw exposed tops and you have sanded them back, then you can apply a masking tape here to make it a little bit easier for you when you're applying your paint underneath. When I'm painting a side table, I usually tip the table upside down and I do paint up underneath right up to where the edge of the masking tape is. I do have another video which compares masking tape versus just hand cutting in, which you can check that out if you want to. However, I would probably suggest for your first few pieces that you do use the masking tape. It just makes it that little bit easier. Apply your masking tape along the edge and then go back along your masking tape with your finger and really make sure that that's pushed down nice and firmly so that you've got a strong adhesion. If you don't have access to any masking tape or you decide that you're just going to cut in around the edges and then re-sand the tops, you can skip this step and move on. Next up is cleaning the piece. I cannot stress enough how important it is to thoroughly clean the piece with a degreaser. There's so much grime, sticky fingerprints, dirt, everything sticks to the surface of the old varnish and that just is going to stop your new paint from sticking properly and it may in fact cause your paint to peel off in certain places or chip and you really don't want that happening. So make sure that you do a thorough clean with the degreaser. Here I'm using what's called triclinium but most paste brands do have some sort of degreaser that you can use to thoroughly clean your furniture. Now it's time to start painting. I absolutely love this bit, but for me, hand painting is so therapeutic. You're going to get a paintbrush and a roller and start applying the paint to the piece. Here, as you can see, I've used another piece of furniture and tipped the table upside down so that I can easily see the entire underneath section of the piece. When selecting your primer, you're going to want to make sure that it has really good adhesive properties. And also, if you're going to be painting it white, you're going to want the primer to have some stain blocking properties. This is going to stop any tannins that is in the timber bleeding through your paint so that it's going to show on the surface. What this does is if you have tannins bleed through, it can cause your white paint to appear yellow. If you're using a paintbrush for the first time, you want to make sure that you've got enough paint on the paintbrush that you're going to be able to apply it to the piece. However, you don't want too much paint on your paintbrush or roller so that it's thick and has the potential to drip while you're applying it. You then need to check back over the piece once you've painted the paint on and make sure there isn't any drips that you've missed. 
If you do come across any drips while the paint is still wet, you can easily remove those with your paintbrush or roller. If you find the drips once your piece has dried or your primer has dried, you're going to need to sand them off and reprime that section before you apply your top coat or your actual paint. If you leave those there and then try and paint over them, they're going to look very obvious and make your piece look a lot less professionally refinished. If the primer looks like it's really thin and hardly covering the piece, don't stress. The primer does usually look quite transparent and see-through and you're not going to need to worry too much about that as long as you've got the adhesion there and the entire piece has got a little bit of primer to make sure your paint is going to stick. You're then going to let your primer dry fully. Make sure you read the instructions on the can of the primer that you have used and allow the adequate time for it to dry. Once the primer is dry, you're going to repeat the exact same steps by painting your coat, first coat of paint on. I've sped this up even faster because you don't need to sit here and watch me paint at a slow speed, but you'll see that I'm doing the same process and applying the paint in the exact same way that I applied to the primer. I need to make sure that I'm not applying a thick coat of paint and it's more important to apply thin coats, but apply more coats of paint. This way you're going to make sure you have the nicest smooth finish. Okay, so I've gone ahead and painted a second coat on the table up there and this one has got a first coat. So what I'm gonna do is show you up close what the difference looks like between the two different coats. So on this one, you'll be able to see here when I get up close that you'll be able to see the roller marks and you'll be able to see little holes all through the piece where the paint is not thick enough to cover. And then down here where the paintbrush has been applied, you'll be able to see those paintbrush strokes, okay? So this is the first coat of the piece and you'll be able to see that there's obvious marks on the piece with the first coat of white paint. If I move over to where I have painted a second coat of paint, I need the sun to be able to sort of show me. I'll still be able to see some of those roller marks. However, they're getting less, okay? So the, the, the holes or the black bits in the middle are not as obvious as what they were when I had only one coat. And down the bottom where I have painted a second coat, I can still see some brush marks, but not as many, okay? So each coat, you'll start to see that the... Paint gets a little bit thicker and it gets a little bit less transparent. And then when you have finished painting all of your coats, you'll get a solid white finish and you won't be able to see through that and you won't be able to see those marks where you can see through with the roller. On this piece, I ended up using my primer and then three coats of white paint over the top of the primer to get the finish I desired. Once I had gotten all the legs finished, I tipped the table upright and determined what color I wanted for the tabletops. The timber was a little bit yellow for what I was hoping to achieve, so I am going to be applying a whitewash to the timber. I created a whitewash using a ratio of one quarter paint to three quarters water. So I added a little bit of white paint and then I added the water and mixed that together. I then paint on the whitewash to the timber and wipe back any excess as I'm going. So you'll see me use my paintbrush and apply the whitewash to the timber and then wipe back straight away with that excess. I really only wanted a really light white timber look, but you can apply more coats or make that a little bit darker by going half paint and half water if you want to have a really light timber feel at the end. Once you've finished applying the whitewash, you're going to need to put a top coat on the table and that will change the color. So make sure you've got the color the way you want it before you apply the top coat. All right, so I wanted to do a quick little video just showing you the difference about the uh, timber and the color of the timber once you have sealed it. So this is the table when I have whitewashed the table and the table is still raw. And this is the table, what it looks like after I've whitewashed a very light layer of whitewash and then I have put the sear clear sealer over the timber so that's got a clear polycrylic over it and that is raw timber so you will notice or you can see there that it's still even once I've done one layer of a thin whitewash has actually brought out quite a lot more color than when it was raw so I could have done a few more layers of the whitewash if I wanted it to have that consistency there
However, I did just want to try and remove the yellow tones and create a nice light feel to my timber. I was happy to have a little bit of depth to the color of the timber, but it's really important to make sure the color of the timber is exactly what you want it to be before you apply the polycrylic, because once you've applied the polycrylic over the top, you cannot change the color again. That's the whole point of the polycrylic. It seals the piece so that things can't absorb into the timber. I'm going to show you how I apply the polycrylic. You're going to select a polycrylic or polyurethane from the hardware store, and then you're going to use that to protect the top of the surface of the table. Here, I've got a plastic plate and a sponge applicator, and I'm applying the polycrylic with the sponge. I'm dipping it into the polycrylic that's in the plate and then applying that very thin coats across the table. I need to make sure that it is thin coats because I don't want to have any bubbles or thick patches in my polycrylic, which will look obvious when it does dry. I usually apply three to five coats of the polycrylic to get the best protection for my surface. Thanks for watching. I loved sharing this with you. Here's the end result. It's fresh, it's modern, it's light, it's bright. Now it's time for you to go ahead and get your first furniture makeover underway.